In this video, which is part 30 of how to create a custom candlestick chart in ChartJS, we're going to focus on the next indicator, which is the MACD indicator, or another name is what we call the Moving Average Conver Convergent Divergent Indicator. And basically, it is a bar indicator. It shows the movement of price or the volume. So it's one or the other. However, it will track it and it will color eventually depending on that movement. So let's start to look how we can create that because we have to create here first the item to show the values. So now we have our RSI or relative strength index that's being shown and hidden here. Now what I want to do is add up another item which is called the MACD which is called the moving average convergent divergent. And that will allow us to create bars and these bars will eventually be colored. But what we want to do first is to have these bars being shown in here. This is a tricky one because putting them in here and showing and hiding them doesn't work that easy. So we need to eventually have a more advanced feature if you want to show it independently. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, scroll down here. And the first thing what I want to do is here is in the data set. And we're just going to copy this nice chunk of data. Put a comma here, paste this. And then I'm going to say here, this will be a bar. And then we have here what we call the MACD or the moving average convergent divergent indicator. Uh, border color black, well, this will be ignored for now. And then we have the data here, but this data, this is very important. This data must be again with two specific values. Why? We're going to create a floating bar. So we want to have the floating bar in here, very similar to what we have here, these bars that float. So I'm going to put in here a simple value. I'm going to put in here three and 10. And of course there are some different numbers in that, but for now I will not focus on that. That doesn't matter so much. Let's get it working first. And then afterwards we can make this nicely. So I'm just going to paste them all in there. There we are. And finally there, save that refresh. And of course, right now you get this very weird response here. So what is truly happening, it doesn't understand that this is a separate chart or separate item that should be stacked on top of each other. You can see here, here we have the bar that is just beside it and then we have the other bar here. So everything is a bit what we could say messed up. Don't worry, we're going to work on that. So once we have this, and we have here the Y lower, I guess we can remove this one here and save that, refresh. Then if I put in there, all right, so we have this one here. Uh, what we're going to do next is start to work on the scale. So I'm going to scroll down here. And let's see, we have here the plugins and then we have somewhere here the scales. So we have here the Y lower. And what we need to do is if we want to put it somewhere here between, we can just copy one of those and put it in there. So I'm just going to put that in here and let's see what where it eventually ends up. And what I'm going to give this name is the YMACD, which is the moving average convergence indicator. Begin at zero could be true maximum. Well, this chart will depend on it. So it doesn't matter really. Uh, it has a different indicator structure. So I will ignore that for now. I will not work on making it perfect. But what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to force this on one for now. We have these ticks here, counts, display false. Um, Let's maintain this for now. If I save this, refresh, and then if I select this, what happens is you can see here now we get these bars here, but I want to make sure that they are officially aligned with each other. So for that, we need to basically indicate that the X scale is being stacked. So I'm going to go up here and we're going to say here stacked equals true comma save and look now. You can see here now it's being stacked nicely. If I select this one, it shows you this and that. Of course, this is still slightly buggy because look what we have. Look what happened if I hover here and then I go here. You can see here it's buggy. So I have to figure out this here or how we can at least terminate this issue here. Anyway, we have this now that starts to look nice. And then eventually what I want to do is I want to change the colors on this one. And uh, what we need to do the colors, this is basically based, if I'm not mistaken, by the price movement or something or volume movement. So what I will do is eventually we're going to focus on the colors. 
we're going to make this up and down a little bit so it looks nice. But I will focus on that on the next video where we're going to show that.